Hey everybody, I'm Ken Peach Van Druten, and that is... <laughs> this is Chris Rabel. Right here. Right here. As here as it gets. That is Chris Rabel. Right here. How are you, my friend? Awesome beanie you got going on today. I know. Is that, a, new, is that a wintry thing going on in Georgia? Like, what's happening down there? Nope. This is me trying to be uh, topical and seasonal. Uh, I'm tired of my hat collection at the moment except <laughs> for the stuff i got from offstage storage in la <laughs> steve Curtin, james barry look them up they're probably making money during this thing god damn it good thinking guys this is i had to buy where did i buy this when i went to go do the gaga biden thing oh yeah right i, I had nothing and warm. you were out in the cold for fucking and all day long i was out in the elements so i, I purchased this so times. here it all is right. check it out Yep. Well, this is my DPA hat that I wear all the time. So. I see that. You know what that means, guys? That means Pooch didn't take a shower today. Pooch is <laughs> wearing exactly a hat. Exactly what that means. <laughs> see these I little see Easter it. eggs we're dropping everywhere? What is, what is happening? I yeah. smell like fucking grilled cheese. What's I happening? I smell like COVID. <laughs> This is what happens when you live inside your house and you're having a second wave. You fucking, you know, you don't go outside and so you don't shower. Yeah. That's, so that's what's what up now? Check it out. Let's talk audio. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it, the stuck out of you. Um, all right, well, uh, cool. Um, let's w- let's talk about audio. What do you want to talk about? Let's talk week? audio. Let's talk about. <clears throat> excuse me, filtering, high pass, filtering. low pass, filtering. I yeah. love filtering. Filtering. I love filtering. Your friend. I think yes. that um, you know people don't use uh, high pass filtering and and low pass filtering to their full advantage. Um, like for instance, just a, a global kind of question, just to start us off, like, is there a channel on your desk in a 125 input mm-hmm. desk? Mm-hmm. Is there a channel where you don't have low? Yes. Pass? Yes. I had a feeling that's what you're going to ask. <clears throat> yes. But, but like very few, yes. they would be to answer your question. Um, not no kick not any on a kick drum unless it's some sort of creative use resonant filter type thing you yeah. know what i mean but it's not a normal thing like you don't it, yeah. no that's that's not a normal default thing kick drums don't get it bass rarely but uh, but sometimes not quite often but sometimes um Do you high pass a, a microphone on a bass guitar and leave the DI yeah alone? usually usually a microphone for me on a bass guitar is a like it's the wild wild west like there's no telling <laughs> what i'm gonna do with it i might distort it i might i'm probably gonna use it to make more like it's like a tone like a yeah, yeah. mid-range kind of thing sure. you know so yes that one might get it and because if it's a live mic if it's like unusable bullshit rumble i don't want that in there right you know um other places that don't get them i don't high pass toms as a rule the only reason i'm high passing a tom is i know i know because I, I was thinking and, and i was thinking about doing this one that i know in your session i saw some things where you do i don't high pass toms unless it's a resonant thing if like the mic stand or the something's like <laughs> so i don't right. do toms huh. I don't by default, uh, of course, tracks I'll leave I, like, like digital sources. I fully expect to, but I don't by default. A lot of yeah. these other things that we're going to talk about. I mean, I do it before as I'm building the session. Totally. So I guess that's it really. It's just kick bass and toms. Uh, rarely, wh- whatever kicks, never, yeah, what, what I just said, those things. Yeah. Well, and I mean, electronic you know, stuff, I don't, but I, but I will. I, I expect that Korg Triton to give me way more 80 hertz than I would ever want out of a piano, you know? Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. right. Um, you? So basically, it's the uh, channels that you are saving to kind of have energy in the sub range, um, right. you know, 80 and below, um, you know, and, and part of what makes a really killer mix is having, um, you know, intelligibility in those channels in that range. And mm-hmm. so part of the reason that we use high pass filtering on the rest of all the stuff is to make space 
for those things. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm exactly the same way, uh, except for Tom's, that was an interesting thing. I'm, I am even on a floor, Tom, I'm putting in a little bit of, uh, of, uh, high pass filtering just to get rid of that kind of rumble stuff that's there. And Uh also I feel like, see my EQ on Tom's is pretty aggressive in general. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, so, like a lot of high end, there's high end shelves and stuff to get that, you know, nice attack to cut through the overall mix that I've got going on with drums. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's true also in the low end. Like, I boost um, a little bit of 60 generally. Mm-hmm. or maybe a hundred. It, it depends on how, what the Tom sounds like. Um, 60 to a hundred, let's say, mm-hmm. although 80 sucks. So it's either 60 right. or hundred. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 80 is for clubs. 80 is for fucking losers. Yeah. Like yeah. I hate 80. It's the yeah. worst. Um, you can have 80 and 400. Um, 80, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I'm kind general. of coming back around to 80 these days, but I'm doing it on purpose. I'm making <laughs> I'm making myself embrace it. Okay. Embrace 80. Embrace yep. 80 hertz. Right. Give 80 um, some love. <laughs> give 80 some love. No, but I mean, you know, normally low end wise, 80 is a killer. Like, um, and to me, um, in PAs, you know, that crossover point of, of being at 80 is also. And it's round. 80. It's a yeah. weird, it's between sub yeah. and low yeah. end. And it's like. Yeah. What, yeah, I get, I get it. Yeah, I get it. So um, anyway, what I'm saying about Tom's is that I aggressively add 60 a lot into most of my Tom's, even rack Tom's. Mm-hmm. Um, and then high pass so that the, there's nothing below 40. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So there's this big bump that has all the nice, you know, boo shit in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't go boo down into, into sub- and, I, and, and I'm grinning and laughing because, of course, I hear 40 hertz. Of course, I feel 40 hertz. Of course, I strategically go and do things at 40 hertz. But in the way that you're talking, I very, like, I very rarely feel like I hear it that way. Huh. Like, I just don't, you know, I'll, I'll do it if I have, like, if a, a gate, opens errantly you know not on purpose and it's like <laughs> and, and then i find by sneaking the high pass up i'll go oh oh wow yeah but th- those last two bottom octaves a lot of times i'm just like what i don't know <laughs> i i don't know so <laughs> but, i'm just I my it. my toms are aggressive in both of those areas top and bottom mm-hmm. um so that you when you get into a, a tom fill that's low toms you know floor toms there's impact almost as much as a kick drum yeah um uh but but still having that nice little high endy you know um totally. crack to them um but uh yeah and you know as i was talking to i was thinking about there is actually moments where i'm still boosting 60 but the high pass is above 60 oh right? yeah because it's a you know um yes. it depends on the curve of the filter right yeah um maybe talk about that like what are your uh, there's options on consoles there's sometimes there isn't an option but mm-hmm. um do you prefer a low pass filter that has a nice curve in it or do you want one that's like super i want to go i want to nuke the shit out of it i am of the me too you know i grew up and when i grew up when you know 24 decibel per octave filters were common even on shit consoles yep um or you know i know what i want and i like that i like there to be i like at least when we're talking in live sound um for the way that in the in the way that we're discussing high pass filters right now which is in the damage control kind of way right i prefer very steep um if it's more of a a glorified shelf kind of thing, then I'm okay with a 12 yeah. or something. You know what I mean? But no, for me, I prefer for it to be very, very sharp. Um, I do like where they will give you in the digital realm where they will give you at least supposedly um, an accurate representation of with that aggressive shelf, is there a resonant bump? Yeah. Uh, and if you don't hear it, don't worry about it. If you hear it, worry about it. And if you hear it and see it, 
then I like when they give you the ability to, to smooth that out because that can be a thing too. I did a thing yesterday with some friends of ours, a video, and I was talking about, uh, I have noticed in, in high pass filtering, there's a place I'll often go on Digico's where I'll, I'll high pass pretty aggressively on the vocal and then hope I can come down, you know, like I'll start at, it's either like 184 or 189. Like I get up there. I really want oh, dude, it to I'm, be. I'm more aggressive than that. I'm like into 300. Like oh, okay. I hear you. I feel you. And, and lot, yeah. Lots and lots of people are. I yeah. hope it can go lower. But, Me too. But what I do, my, my default when I'm like writing a show file is I put the high pass in and it usually goes to 184 or 189 and then it doesn't show me this bump but I just know it I then take the bottom band of EQ and I go to that exact point and I make like a little 3 dB notch because I swear to God I always hear something around there so I can't remember where this started but I did point, <laughs> you were asking about how aggressive so the, yeah the, the how answer, aggressive and and um you got into a point that that I wanted to get into in 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 that with that filter you're also adjusting phase and you're adjusting you're causing yes um what's that more called? times that? than not that you're, resonant that you're resonant causing form. resonant frequencies to happen by using a, a high pass filter even if it mm -hmm. doesn't show you like yeah. listen experiment with a with uh, you know a high pass bring it up and then be in an instrument that has information you know in that crossover point whatever it is mm -hmm and listen, to, you'll hear a little bump that happens in that. Um, and that has to do with the phase relationship that's happening um, right there. Yeah, which is an interesting anomaly because it's like you got it kind of, and again, some, I don't know, phase linear EQs, some, you know, some EQs can can undo that with their yes. trickery or claim to, but it's kind of like- <laughs> <Witchcraft>. <laughs> Yeah, tomfoolery. <laughs> trickery. But, it's um it's kind of like you got to have your you know you got to have your what is it have your cake and eat it too yeah. like you're going to lose all that low end but right but then you got to make a decision on where you put it because you're actually going to get a little something more you know so then you got to choose am i going higher and lower am i taking care of it with an eq am i just letting it ride you know right. what's the what's the move definitely um cool um so let's talk about vocals like what's your philosophy there with vocals specifically you know um, we can talk about low pass filtering too because i i think it's something that people don't do a lot of yeah um and uh i think it's just as important is negotiating the energy that's you know above let's say 10k um or even lower like 8k mm -hmm. you know that making space and having control of all of that energy across your console is just as important as getting rid of the the low end part of this component you know the the everyone thinks about high pass filtering as being hey this is how i'm going to keep my pa from feeding back this is how i'm mm -hmm. going to um navigate <clears throat> those low end frequencies but i think people forget about you know low pass um yeah so talk about that a little bit yeah, well, well, I'll go to where what you first said, which was the vocal thing. It'll be interesting after we finish this. Let's come back around and go to like, what do we always high pass and where and that this? Yeah, I think yeah, there's yeah. Some, some mileage here. For me with vocals, well, this this is my whole thing. Every record I listen to, f my whole life, I don't hear a ton of low end in vocals unless it's Barry White, and it's so weird to me where people whether it's an artist that has it in their head or another engineer. And now let me say this, let me preface all of this by saying I like low end in vocals. I want as much low end in a vocal as possible. However, I challenge you to pick 10 songs randomly right now from whatever your playback source of choice is. How much low end do you hear? And it always <laughs> freaks me out when people are like, you know, I want all that low end in the vocal. And I'm like, from what record? what I totally agree. unless it's you know just death metal or barry white i don't hear it so i like a clean intelligible vocal and i want as much low end as is usable but i don't want a bunch of mush down there i also don't since again we do live sound i don't want a bunch of bullshit proximity effect that's not low end that's microphone uh that's proximity effect. That's not yeah. natural, you know? Right. So that's why 
I guarantee you where you, if you might just be ballsy enough to be like, you know what, I'm high passing this thing to 300 to start. I'll go to whatever I just said and then cut it up a lot. And we probably get the same thing. So I'm sure we do. I will go in and high pass everything <clears throat> on a session, on a show file as I'm building it. Or if I'm walking up to a desk, I will go in me, I go to that range and that's assuming and hoping that's also, if it's, it's PAI tuned, I know that's going to work. Yeah. That's also assuming th there's a big tuning element to it too, but let's just assume it's a flat system. F flat, you know what I mean by that guys, right? Like it's <laughs> linear, a, it's linear. linear. It's not yeah. some bullshit hype system. Yeah. So no, I go in with vocals always, always, always expecting to high pass that. I was saying that, you know, you mentioned on the toms where you'll high pass at 40. I can't tell you how many videos I've watched, you know, YouTube wise where the guy's like, listen to what happens when I engage the 80 Hertz high pass filter on the vocal. And I'm like, <laughs> nothing happened nothing happened. Nothing at all happened There's nothing there <laughs> especially because i'm watching that person sing from back here nothing happened so you know uh, yeah uh, i know i mean um i think it's a common mistake that people make um in making that vocal intelligible is not high passing enough right, yeah in a vocal mm -hmm. um and you know listen we all like that sound, but really it's like low mid more than it is lows. That's yeah, it's not lows. Yeah, it's, right. It's it, it's 250, you know, um, yep. or 200 sometimes deep, you know, it dips down into there, uh, mm -hmm. depending on the vocalist and the proximity effect and all those kind of things. But anything below that in a vocal is just nonsense. It's and it you're nonsense. making, especially since it is your hottest thing in your mix it is the mm -hmm. loudest thing in your mix or it should be um and uh to make that be you know the lightsaber of sound that has <laughs> yeah <laughs> that right. has 40 hertz in it is just explosive dumb. yeah 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 so don't what, do i that. mean what about you when you when you when you make up a show file do you have like a default or yeah oh, every high pass filter in um and on vocals Oh, on vocals. Yeah. I, like I said, at 300. Yeah, it's gotcha. in and at 300. And, and by and, doing and, that too. But I will tell you, that is the default. So like I start my file and the minute that I hear vocal, the first thing that I grab is that right. high pass filter <clears throat> and <clears throat> find the spot where it's like, you know, there, there's still meat of that vocal. Yeah. You know, so oftentimes I'm turning it down from 300. But dude, yep. I mean, there are times um, Chester Bennington, um, from Lincoln Park, I think his high pass was upwards of 400. Because he's doing this shit too, right? Correct. That's right. exactly what I was going to say. Because he is the cupper and it's it, there's tons of that information. And so by shifting the high pass filter up in there, that information is still there, by the way. You know, even though there's yeah. this, you know, 12 or 24 dB octave thing, that mm. information is there. And even though it's at 400, that doesn't mean that anything below 400 is gone. You know, right. um, it means that anything below like 200 is probably gone. Mm -hmm. um, so um, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's my go-to is 300. Um, you know, I'm gonna have some like standard high pass settings that are like go-to, you know, snare drum that's, you know, high pass to, I don't know what the number is, but it's, you know, whatever, 150 or something, you know, is where mm -hmm. it starts. Um, I tend to, my setup file tends to be over high passed. So when I hear something, I know that the first thing I'm gonna reach for once I gain something up is the high pass filter to knock mm -hmm. it down a little bit until it's the usable point. Does that make right. sense? <clears throat> it does. Um, which is interesting. I tend to under high pass. Oh, wow. Interesting. But, but I have them, they're engaged. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do start, but I'm with you. Cause it's one of the first, it's like, it's funny when you, when we started this video, you were saying, you know, it's maybe an underutilized tool or this and that yeah. hearing you say that. And I'm usually the guy that's like, I'm so open-minded. I can believe most things. And I'm just like, I, I can't even believe that that's a fact. <laughs> Like to me, that's the first thing you grab once you've, gained, once you've gained an instrument or an Absolutely. input rather. 
it's 100%. the first it's the first thing you go to and again mainly i keep going back to you because we do live sound but we we, we do, it's because we're live sound engineers and it's not just tonality that, that's down there that's just garbage that's down yeah. there but that's my i don't know about you but that's my that's the first move after the game it is absolutely so you know whenever i do master classes and stuff i always talk about my four fundamental things and you know the first thing is obviously my choice my placement but the second thing is high pass filtering right mm -hmm. and then the third thing is gain structure so in none of those things do i mention eq or compression right. or any of those are like way down the list yeah but high pass filtering and low pass filtering is right next to gain and microphone choice and yeah. and how i'm thinking about what's important right mm -hmm. like literally i i let me ask you this do you think what if you didn't have any eq the only thing that you had was high pass and low pass filters do you think you could get a pretty good result out of a 24 input band ish 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 but if someone took those away from you you don't get high pass filtering but you can have eq Ooh. do you understand yeah, what i mean do you understand I do. what i mean yeah. i do because the first thing i'm thinking is now that you took those high passes away is it, what gorilla means am i going about using that eq <laughs> to mimic what the totally. high pass was doing you'd be setting every low filter on shelf and like, everything would you know. be shelved and would yeah. be yeah totally so that's totally. my by saying that exercise that we just went through it's it shows you how important we value high pass filtering and, and low mm -hmm. pass filtering i think it's mm -hmm. um is it, like i said it's the second thing behind whatever mic choice i make in placement that's a good point that's um I guess to me, it's like such a no brainer, but it's come up a couple of times in the past couple of days. And then we're talking with you too. I guess to me, it is so obvious yeah. of how critical it is to utilize. Now I'll tell you this. I don't, and I do know that you and I differ on this one. Um, why don't we differ? <laughs> I know. How is that possible? It's so um, funny, dude. Like we come at things in totally different directions, but end up in the same place almost every time. So yeah. It just goes to show you, you know, it's like nothing, as long as you end up in the, in the right place, it doesn't matter how you got there. Exactly. Exactly. And it's kind of interesting. It's very telling of how different tools can yield very similar sonic results or, sure. you know, we are mixers. Yeah. So how we mix, you know, the literal mixture of will probably sound very, 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 very similar. Yet yeah, going about it differently. Um, but the way in that I differ only because we've talked about this and um, and I've noticed too over the course of the past 17 years that we've been doing these videos that you will talk about low passing things way <laughs> yes. more than I do. Yeah. Um, and the only reason here's here's okay, this is what it goes back to. Ultimately, this is what it goes back to is somewhere forever and ever and ever, ever ago. Um I remember right when I first started mixing, I remember really enjoying going to what were always fixed band high shelves and the magic that would occur with 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 high boosts, you know. Yeah. Now go going back listening to it, I was just boosting a bunch of garbage razor bladey stuff, but you know, whatever. Um and I also you can, remember, you can uh, oh sorry to interrupt you, but you, no, no. you can have like immediate definition show up yes. as mix if you start cranking a bunch of you know high end into stuff you can't it's this, but the result after time is like ah, it's beautiful. the same way that you can yeah. come up with a really clean mix by cutting every last bit of 125 to 250 hertz yes and then in the end you've got this anemic mix that has no groove at all so um but i do remember reading something somewhere about some psychoacoustic thing about how you know we utilize both hf and kind of ultra hf frequencies to localize and all these things. whatever it's stuck in my brain as some mumbo jumbo that i i don't i don't think it's mumbo jumbo there's something to it but sure. it's become this kind of like thing of mine where i want to retain as much high-end energy and information as possible because i think it has benefits to us beyond just the immediate oral notice of that's brighter 
I just, I think there's something more to it. This is me overthinking it. Just work with me. So I'm, um, <laughs> I'm following you. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. So that being said, what I do where I'll use, I don't use a ton of low pass filters. I'll use them to uh, the, the, the main place I'll use them is if I have a vocalist that's on a thrust, right. And there's just that hash floating around and I just take it down to wherever that hash goes away. That, just, you know, see just touch it. it. Yeah, just touch it. To where it goes away. The other time I would use it would be commonly if I have like uh, with Bruno, for instance, I've got the guys in their horns and they're just yeah. roving around with these goddamn things, pointing <laughs> them at everything, including the symbols, yes. including the edge of the stage and all that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do that. Um, and then the other time I'll do it, the other times I'll do it, if I have a super clicky bass, a clacky clacky bass. I'm not afraid to low pass to like, I go to 4k a lot on basses to get rid of that stuff. Um, but not always. And other times I'll be like, yeah, but in context, it actually kind of works. I'll turn it off. Um, and then the only, the only other thing that's immediately coming to mind when I would use a low pass filter is with, um, like Leslie low, <laughs> as random as that is because i know that speaker is only doing up to yeah, first exactly. of all it's an auxiliary speaker really and yeah. it's only doing up to like 400 to 800 rolled off talk about a filter those are those are the instances that where i'll use low passes i otherwise i don't ever really think to turn one on unless something's wrong but i know you will go like i've heard you talk about guitars and you're known for these gigantic guitars you'll use them pretty aggressively from the jump on guitars, right? I do, yeah. I mean, you know, there really isn't, um, even in heavy metal, heavily distorted guitars, there isn't a whole lot of information above 10K for sure. Right. Sometimes even 8K. Um, and I, I really find, um, well, here's the thing. All right, the way that I tune PAs, I think is a little bit different than yours in regards to all of that super high end sparkly bit shit. Uh -huh. Like I leave it in the PA like that is if you looked at a curve of my smart of whatever my, you know, PA common curve is, it's literally, you know, a bump in the low end and then linear as far out as the PA goes. Mm -hmm. So if that PA will reproduce 15, 16 K, then it's it's linear all the way out there and you know most people's kind of start dipping around 10. Mm -hmm. um and i i do that on purpose because i feel like some of the inputs um that do have really nice information up there like the sizzly bits of of symbols and um you know i'm trying to think what else maybe some playback things that have some really cool little sure. you know sizzly stuff in them if i can get rid of the other information that's on that stage and open up that ability to use that clean linear information of 10k and above mm -hmm. um i i do uh and so i look at things and i'm like well that instrument is not reproducing those frequencies really and if it is it's noise mm -hmm. um and so you know bass guitar wasted guitars, energy it's wasted energy that's exactly mm -hmm. what how i envision it it's wasted energy and get rid of it because the things that do use it will sound that much better Mm -hmm. So that's my philosophy. But I mean, you look at some of my channels, you know, I've had people come up to and look at my channel, you know, we're, we're talking like there's a lot of this right. shit going on. <clears throat> in my channels, you right. Know? Um, and, and, uh, you know, I always go, people don't realize that there are things like vocal that, you know, there isn't usually any 14 K in a no. vocal. Right. And they think there is. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, no, that thing doesn't make that frequency, you know? Yeah. In fact, what they might be wanting to hear, we've talked about this before, is like is an artifact of an EQ. Correct. You know, used in a creative way to make that. To get you know, the air. To get the air. God, listen to any Justin Bieber type vocal, yeah. you know, all that. I can't even reproduce it because it's not real. All that stuff <laughs> on top. That's yeah, just all boost, 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 boost. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, True. Yeah. Um, was I so anyway, say, that's, a, that's my thing with low pass. I, I take most things 
that don't have that energy up there and just say, well, it doesn't need to have any energy there. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, scooch her in. Um, so and I end up with low pass on vocals and guitars and, you know, all kinds of shit. Generally not drums. Yeah, not really drums for some reason. I, I like some of the super high clicky shit. Yeah, like in my toms and my snare drum and stuff that mm. a low pass filter would not be in a, appropriate to eliminate that stuff. Um, but but definitely guitars and vocals for sure. Yeah. And I figured in our conversations, <clears throat> you know, I've always known. I mean, obviously, like I get why you, it's the same reason that I high pass. I, I mentioned the things that I don't I high, yeah. high, high pass the shit out of everything else because it's just unneeded, unnecessary, unusable stuff. You know, I just, I mentioned where I've just got this thing about, about, you know, whatever, retaining HF where I can, but, um, well, but yeah. I feel like most PAs reproduce mid range very, very well. Like True. let's say from a hundred up to 10 K most PAs got that magic yeah but where you notice what separates the men from the boys in my opinion is that crossover where the lows go into a sub and yep. the way that a pa handles that information and then the way that a pa handles 10k and above those are when i say hey i like you know x pa adamson what I, the reason i like adamson is because they do those two things very very well and if i have my mix happening correctly in that normal space but also in the killer space that adamson really shines on mm -hmm. then you you know that is like a perfect storm for me that's like oh hell yeah you know when when i have all of that information and that is all about low pass and, and high pass filtering for me yep what about so what are some let's give them some like defaults like you're writing a show file i'll go i'll go first go i'm writing a show file kick drums nothing snares i have been going lower with my high pass my default high pass on snares i also have been doing something lately where in the past i would high pass the snare top at say and i don't just i mean i like i'll do it without listening i'll put it somewhere sure but then once it comes time to listen i'm just trying to get just trying to make sure there's no put 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 that's all i'm trying to get out of there um in the past let's say i would have taken the high to or the high the top to like one depending let's just say it's a standard like five and a half or something it's not some super deep drum i'm going to take it to like 150 maybe 120 something like that and then on the low the, the snare bottom I would have a different high pass there and it's closer to the kick, blah, 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 blah. Now I've been making a point to match them because I've found some, I've, and I, I think you and I may have seen this when we were messing around with that three, three, eight, but I have found, I've always heard about, but I have found some times where as I move the high pass on one of those two, it affects, and it does, of course it does. It affects their phase relationship because that's what's Absolutely. happening. Yep. And so what I've started doing is either committing I'm making both top and bottom. Nowadays, I'm going close to 100. Like I'm leaving a little more of the kick in there or I'm doing it at the group. Yep. So 100 is my new snare. Uh, <laughs> the, the hat, I typically go, and here, this is where it gets interesting. We start talking about spot mics, hat and ride. And for some people, overheads. Man, I know lots of people in live sound that they're like 900, like it's just- on it's, hat? Yeah. Or on anything that's oh. a symbol where they're just like, it's, it's just that. Okay. Uh, and I really, and I don't mean like I've seen it once and I'm saying, I know a lot of people that do it and now they that I take the high pass filter and turn it all the way up. They, all they want is, and now that I've seen show files, I see it more and more often this year with some consulting stuff. I'll go to the high hat. I'll go, the highest I'll go is 400 and I'll try to, I'll usually end up like more like 250. Yeah on there because there's some chunk there to but me, i'll also there's like there's a great information down in there it. i hear you i hear yeah. you but man and i i'm even thinking of now that i'm thinking about it i watched some video not too long ago very well respected engineer i then a super badass engineer and on his i swear to god i think the hi-hat was it was like 1.1k 
was where it was. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, man. Huh. So anyway, the hat, I'll do that. I'll take it to like 250, but I'll expect to put a little notch in there somewhere if it's too yes. chunky. Yeah, I yeah. just said, Tom's, I don't do anything. Ride, I will go higher. I'll go to like 400 because it's living right down there in the drums. And then on overs, um, if they're overheads where I'm really expecting to get some drum kit sound out of them, and I, let's just say it's a reasonably noisy stage, I'll go to 160, hope I can stay there to get some meat, but expect to maybe have to go up to 200. Yep. Love it if I get to go lower. Yep. So those are my defaults for those. What about you? That's that's pretty much my deal. It, it, minus the toms, um, I definitely do some high pass filter on toms. But um, yeah, kick, leave alone. Snare drum, I am absolutely the of the same mindset that whatever high pass setting that you do to the top is what becomes the lower uh, high pass filter. Um, because there's a real weird relationship that happens there when you have two microphones that are pointing at the same drum and are pretty close depending on how thick the drum is, you know, piccolo mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and that phase relationship can get smeared really easily if the placement isn't right and if the high pass filtering is different. Um, so yeah, uh, same same high pass filtering there. Um, I do, I, I, first of all, let me just say, I love the thunk out of a snare drum. It's like, uh, I think it's ingrained in my soul that 80s, yes. 80s snare drum, you know, that has that. It's thing. the holy grail. You know, if, if yes. I get that going on, I'm like, hell yeah, man. That's Isn't it funny how if the snare is good, oh, I don't sweat a single other input, man. <laughs> you know, no big it's deal. The snare, right? Yeah, I know. It's true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, because I think it lives in a place that drives like everything around it. And if that particular thing which is pretty upfront in your mix a snare drum is usually um you know if that's killing like if that's mm -hmm. awesome it has you know something about it that makes it awesome i think it really helps your mix so that that's why um but i tend to do high pass filtering you know 24 db high pass filter and then boost a little bit of in it with an eq in that low end which kind of makes the filter the 24 db filter kind of go even more yeah wanky like um, even more straight if, if that makes sense uh, it does i get it so instead of this you know nice whatever filter and let's say that this is a hundred and but there's still all this information that is you know 80 50 40 if you have a really good high pass filter that's more like this um, that's great because then 50 and 40 go away quicker. But mm -hmm. if you add a little bit of boost right here, low end wise, it kind of makes the filter do this to mm -hmm. me. So I get that hundred of a killer snare drum, you know, hundred to 150 of that killer snare drum. And, and then definitely have almost a brick wheel wall filter below that point. Yep. So that's what I do with snare. Um, I, um, you know, I'll do different EQ top and bottom as you do, you know, you're getting that you either want the snare sound from the bottom, you know, so that that's EQ, not high pass and, and low pass, but, um, hi hat, uh, definitely I'm in the same boat with you. I like a chunky low hi hat, but it can't have any sort of wind noise. Right. right. And it can't have, um, you know, like the placement gong, of it clunk. Yeah. The placement of it really matters. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you get the placement right, then you can scooch that high pass filter and get all that really interesting information. When, when a dude's doing all kinds of really cool ghost note stuff mm -hmm. that to me doesn't punch through in a high pass filter situation when you crank it all the way to 900 or whatever, and only have that shit of the symbol. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't translate, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm of that school too. Um, high pass filtering on toms, you know, like I, I told you before I do do that. Uh, and then overheads are kind of the same. I may be a little bit higher than 200. 
uh, to start. Like I'll go to like 300 as a starting point um, and then try to scooch down as much as I can <laughs> yeah. without getting all the rumble stage. I end up, you know, on stages like, you know, Iron Maiden stages like ridiculously loud mm -hmm. and um nico's drum kit is you know there's like a giant drum fill you know blowing sideways into the into mm -hmm. the kit itself so overhead wise it, there's a real you know give and take there that i have to to work with you know but i i definitely just scooch it all the way down until i okay i can't deal with that it's making too much you yeah know, crap in my mix um to try to get because i love I love how a snare drum sounds from afar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's really what I'm looking for is maybe some toms and that snare drum to have some capture of that in a almost a recording room kind of a way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, yeah, that's my drums high pass. Yeah. I, I would love, you know, with, with high passing on, on overheads, it's a very lofty goal that it's going to stay low. Like yeah. not only is the high pass going to go up to oftentimes to remove bullshit, EQ moves are also going to be made that have nothing to do with the sonics of the drum kit. Like oh. I'm going to be pulling so much 800 out of there sometimes yep. to just lose the room or the drum fill or the whatever, Yeah, you know? I think it's, you know, when you uh, turn me on to, um, uh, I'm having a Mojave. Oh, Javi. Yeah. Mojave. Sorry, Mojave. Love you. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, when you, when you turned me on to Mojave's, that was a moment of like, you know, a hundred times less EQ, like not yeah. having to reach for that 800, not having to reach for 4k, not having to reach for all the sparkly, super sparkly bits that were just destroying my mix. Mm -hmm. Um, literally it was like, put up the Mojave and, and high pass it and you're done. Um, and so it matters, you know, I mean, there's overhead microphones that I despise. Oh, same here. Pl particularly, let's be fair, in the realm that we work in. Yes. You know what I mean? In like, yeah. I literally, I watched someone use those microphones and I'm not going to say it because I don't want to alienate. I'd so badly want you to, but yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to alienate anybody. I, but I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's not like I haven't been vocal about it in the past, but it's like, there are some like pencil condenser microphones mm -hmm. that are worthless as garbage fucking overheads and people use them all the time. And it's just like, I don't understand it. I get on one of those and I'm just like, you know, high pass into 500 and yep. cutting everything that I can and hating everything and it's hating it. White, yeah, white yeah. noise trash. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, that'd be a good shirt. White noise trash. <laughs> that's the way I feel sometimes. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, uh, so I, I believe that my choice, especially in overheads, makes all the difference because then you're allowed to pull that uh, high pass filter down a little bit and get mm -hmm. some more of that information. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Well, continuing the trend. So moving on, what about you? I know you oftentimes will high pass a bass, right? I do. Yeah. Do yeah. you have a starting spot? Um. <sighs> I think I generally take um, a microphone, a, a bass microphone, and it sits somewhere about 80. Uh -huh. um, and a DI, I find with most bass guitar signals, if I um, high pass to up to like 50, mm -hmm. um, it makes the overall tone of the bass guitar come alive in a PA that has overemphasized subs. You know Cause I mean? you're, yeah. So you're using it when you do that, it's, it's more of like for in an EQ move, yeah. knowing, knowing that there's still some there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Um, it. And it, it's, it's not like it's super noticeable. If you were on a PA full roar at 102 and soloed, you know, the, the bass guitar and then moved that high pass filter a little bit, you would hear a little bit of difference is what I'm mm -hmm. talking about between it and, and it and being out. But in the scope of creating space in the low end uh, and sub information, 
um, it, it's, it's somehow in the global scope of things to me makes it all work better. Yep. I, I understand that particularly because again, we do live sound, <clears throat> no matter how linear you have your PA, we still have probably an exaggerated bit of low end. You yes. know what I mean? Um, and we are so sensitive to, you know, the worst to me in all of mixing, the worst, most amateur sound in the world is uneven low end from a bass guitar. You yep. know, or those, well, we are. Unevenness uh, in general in a bass guitar from going from string to string drives me nuts. I was a bass player, so I'm just like, ah. Yeah, so you're super sensitive to it. Yeah. And we are, because of room resonance, uh, even more exposed. Like you were talking about uh, oftentimes high passing something, and yet there's still all this information down there. I can't tell you how many times I've sat there looking at smart right off to the side, and it's when the artist is like addressing the crowd or there's something, and I know good and well that that vocal is high pass to 190 hertz. I know there's a cut at 170. <laughs> yeah. I know there's a cut at 250. Yes. And he or she goes, Poof, uh, and yeah. I watch this 110 <laughs> uh, hertz spike happen. Yes. You know, yes. we just we live with it. It's in the PAs. It's in the room. So I, I get why you do that on bass. And I do stuff on bass guitars with like multi band compression and stuff too that I probably wouldn't do in a studio mix but you know it's one of those few places we often say our mixes can translate anywhere i will do some more fuckery in live yeah. sound when it comes to the low 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 end to, to preserve it get your you know? fuckery right um, get your fuckery right <laughs> cool so uh how about you how about guitars for you because i know, I know. That you don't low pass but you do high pass what do you high i pass do like? and this is the one i'm genuinely curious about this with you because when i was going to do some gig a few months ago and i was sitting here dicking around with lv1 i was like trying to learn how to save rack presets or something and then i in turn found how to load presets and i found some <laughs> pooch guitar thing yeah. and the whole thing was like it was low pay it was high pass way lower than i thought and there was something else going on in the whole and i've always been like oh wow so i was wanting to talk to you about this um now mind you i have never in my life except for when i was like a house guy in clubs done like drop tuning bands you know what i mean i've never ever ever toured with a band like that it's just not something i deal with so I will go to, uh, on guitars, I'll go, to, I'll start with it at like 160 and hope I can drop it. I'll never forget reading in the 90s an article in Mix Magazine. This is back when I was, God, I wish Pooch and Raybould was around then. I mean, I would have eaten all of this shit up. Yeah. But I remember I read every article that came out and believed it and then tried it and then stuck with whatever ultimately worked for me. But I remember reading something with Jeff Beck's engineer and he was talking about how he high passed it. There's nothing below 200 in his guitar. So I'll go up to 200 to get rid of some woofiness, but basically I'll start at 160 hope I can go lower. It's usually like I'll go lower, but then incorporate some sort of low end cut. So the, the thing is though, I never do big chunky guitar bands, yep. you know? So that's my answer for guitars. What about you? Well, it depends. Um, <laughs> well, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I um, am that guy. And it that does deals depend. Yeah, I am that guy that deals with a lot of bands, you know, I did Limp Bizkit for years and that was every single guitar was like drop D, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and so there is all that information, that same information that's happening in that snare drum that I love. I love that information also in guitars. Um, so guitars in general tend to be less high passed than most people. Um, I like literally leave information from like 80 and above for the mm -hmm. most part in guitars, um, except for, you know, when the low pass, when I'm like, well, there's no information at 10K. So, right. but I literally like, I don't have a good it and set it, you know, set it and forget it thing for guitars. Like it matters to me what the rig sounds like, you know? So if there isn't that information, if the guitar player is not that chug guy, then mm -hmm. I scoots that high pass filter right up to where the information that's coming out of their amp is. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that's higher than 150. Yeah. You know? and, and that's what everyone needs to hear us say. We're we should very, very, very much point this out. We're talking about like building a show file. Yeah. 
default. This is like starting. These are places to start. Yeah. Because guys, you know, we show up with a show file that has a lot of stuff like already. And so we haven't even heard, let's say I haven't even heard this band. Mm -hmm. I still have like my high pass filters are still set. It's a guitar channel. So I'm going to set that to a hundred. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All these things we're talking about are engaged yes. when music starts coming to us. Yes. You know, and then we couple it with both what comes to us. And if we're building the show file and you do the Limp Biscuit reunion tour, yeah. well, you feel pretty good about that 80. Yeah. If I go do, I don't know, Bruno's side project. Yeah. I'm going to 200, man. Nothing's yeah. going on below there. You know, yeah, you're like, so know there. where you are, know the neighborhood. Yeah. You know? I have one of the guitar players in, in Iron Maiden doesn't, his tone doesn't have any of that information. Uh, and so that one, get, one guy, I have the high pass filter up quite a bit, like almost 200, but the mm -hmm. other two guys have information down in there. So their high pass filter is lower. So it's like, you know, right tool for the full, you know? Yeah. Yep. Oh, and I'll say this too, now that I think about it, like with my, um, the only big guitar thing that I usually do, the Kenny Chesney thing, all of those guys have usable tone yeah. down to a hundred, Yeah. but there's three of them and there's a bass guitar. There you go. So they, guess what? That screw your low end. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So well, is, I mean, that's an art too of, yeah. you know, one of the hardest things, one of the very hardest things in Iron Maiden is making three guitar players um, that all at certain points during the show are all three of them are playing strats, by the way. Uh -huh. Marshall. So it's, it, they, their tones are super similar. So trying to get that to all work, uh -huh. um, some of that is high pass filtering, like, you know, one guy is high pass a little bit higher than another guy to give them, you know, space and information. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Cool. Cool. And I guess, I don't know, keys. We keys don't know. For me are, there are, there's some patches that are so overemphasized. But I, I wait and hear them. Like I know I'm going to do it, but I yes. don't know where keys one of a band that has eight keys. Like I have no idea where to. Neither do I. So I'll, they're always there to me. They're engaged. They're in, yeah. but all the way out. You know what I mean? Right. And, and so that is something I reach for, but there is a lot of patches out there that are so overemphasized. I'll crank a high pass filter to get rid of all that information. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I don't need, you know, 12 db of 40 hertz coming out of that warlisser you know it's like, exactly I, and same thing with like i mean of course we could go i could keep going cellos uh yeah. uh, uh uh french horns but you know it gets to the point but yeah. you do know with some of those things like you know i know with horns i'm gonna take that stuff as high as i can until i sure. need it maybe the berry gets lower or what you know they start you know so yeah yeah if you don't the point is if you don't need it get rid of it like you're saying you were talking earlier about on the hf it's just it's just wasted energy and, and it's right. cumulative even if there's just a little something going on down there if you've got enough of that it adds up you know absolutely it does so um you know we do high pass filtering for a bunch of different reasons one of the reasons is to prevent feedback to prevent rumble in the pa it's a um what would you call it a uh I, damage control damage control all right that's one of the reasons that we do high pass filtering another reason we do high pass filtering is to manage all of those frequencies in that low end and frequency buildup of certain things that are in your mix right so you aren't going to want you know everything in your mix sharing 100 hertz is gonna hurt you bad <laughs> you totally. don't want to do that you want to be able to <laughs> spread some things out um and and make them sound better so i make choices in high pass filtering to make space in that particularly hard area right mm -hmm. um and then some things are i do it because the the uh, kind of in another damage control kind of a way it's like uh, you know that Wurlitzer that's making 40 hertz doesn't need any information until 150 really totally. yep you know so i'm actually making a decision to get rid of whatever they're flying at me that's just like oh my god that's gonna wreck my mix you know yep yeah uh, so yeah yep. high pass filtering cool
there it is. We use it. There it is. <laughs> we use it. <laughs> and you, you should, should. do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Well, that's high pass filtering. I hope you got a bunch of information out of that. Um, and uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. And uh, I guess we'll uh, see you on the next one. Absolutely. See you, everybody.